So we're gonna start this out, let's start this out. Okay, so nothing's more annoying than when a print finishes is taken off the bed, especially yeah. if you're not home and you wanna start another print. Right. So you wanna automate it? Yeah. Okay, let's automate it. So Balin here from Automated Layers has a system with a really rad machine here that auto ejects and clears the entire plate um, using a method that I've never really seen before and it's really cool. So Balin here is gonna explain everything. So take it away. We have a kinematic bed that decouples from the front, allowing this tilting motion. We pull the tool head out of the way. The scraper bar with scraper modules interfaces with some force triggers and it will clear the whole length of the bed and then return back to horizontal. So this looks, I'm sorry, extremely complicated at first, but the more I've been looking at it, it's actually a quite ingenious, simple solution because you're just using essentially four standard Z motors like you would on like a normal V, yeah. like a Voron V2. No extra motors. No extra motors, there's four motors. So let's watch this again and see it all in action. So this would be your normal thing. So it'd be able to move all four motors up right now if you were printing. Yep. Okay. So you, you cut. so it has a filament cutter. So it'd be parking the tool head right here, essentially. It's going to do a, a homing. Okay. It'll and home, so, and then it'll uh, do the whole sequence again. So this drops down basically below what would be max height or zero or whatever. Yep. So this would drop down, and this now unlocks the front. Yeah, it brings this tool ball down. Yeah. So now it's cleared. It picks the bed up, and that would pick it up. That is really clever. So when it goes to do a clear the filament or clear the bed, parks the bed, that drops out of the way. So that allows that to pivot down. And this is just your two rear Z motors basically just pulling up. Yep. And it just pivots on some guides and you have some bearings yeah, and the, whatnot. On the back two kinematic joints. And then you have scrapers here and there's a, a pretty clever system in the scrapers and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, what's this like, looks like silver tape or it's like unraveling. Is that just to, what is that? That's a linear force spring. A linear? It's just a linear spring. Oh, just to ensure there's like some tension there and whatnot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That is really clever. And then it locks back up and it's good to go. And you could run all four motors up and it would just be a normal print bed like a, a Voron Trident or something. It would just probe the bed, get the bed flat, and begin your print. Awesome. Now, there's some cool stuff going on with these scrapers. So what's going on with these scrapers here? Because something that would kind of suck in a system like this is if you had a print really stuck to the bed. Right. That's why we uh, came up with this force trigger. It's not a sensor, but it's a trigger. So the contact will break after a certain force is applied. So this is just uh, this is just a spring and some washers. So metal <laughs> conducts electricity. And if you push too much, it just breaks the contact, right? Yep, it breaks the contact. And you have one insulating washer, that's nylon, in between the spring and the top washers. Okay. And that drops in here. You know, there's no spring, just two pins. Pushes in, you got some Wagos. Here's a completed one. This, so this is this an is example demo, one. Yep. Right? So it's a normally closed circuit, but once the scraper bar is pushing and has exceeded the force that you've set, the machine stops. Excellent. So that, that way you have a built-in fail safe here. Yeah. If something's stuck to the bed or something, just whatever reason, you're not just gonna destroy your machine here yeah. on, a, on a stuck print. Lots of fun crashes in development, so oh, we had to come up with this. Oh, I bet, I bet. <laughs> I do not want to see the parts graveyard. And then, uh, what's up with the scrapers here? Because there are some like cool mechanicals to them as well. Yeah, let's see if I can demonstrate this. So, there's seven of these across the back bar, and the blade is not touching the bed when it's in the printing orientation. Okay, so we have a little bit of a gap there. Yeah. So as the module, approaches the bed, it brings the blade to the bed, and then it tensions the blade to the bed. Oh. So two stages. Yep. Translating the blade and then pre-tensioning the blade. That is really clever. And I'm loving how much of this is just using kinematic motion. You're not needing extra servos or wiring. It's just essentially your four motors are moving stuff and just the way they move activate different functions in different orientations kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. That is really cool. Uh, so we do have some gears here. What are these for down here? 
Yeah, you can extend the feet out so several inches so you can make the whole printer stand taller if you want it. Oh, so if you want more room for clearing or whatever. My favorite way to run the printer is between two desks and just put a, oh. a large bucket underneath. That, that would be clever. Or if you had several of them, you could just build a bench with essentially no, 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 no table and just let them fall through. Yeah, you could just drill a hole in the table and that would be that. <laughs> or just the chute or whatever, however you want to set it up, however you want to set it up. Slide, chute, mount it on a wall. Yeah. It's, put a conveyor belt. Put a conveyor Conveyor belt. Or, or a conveyor belt. <laughs> <laughs> that, the joy of a machine that you can customize, you can make it work for your needs. Yeah, we're really excited to see what people do with it. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And then the tool head on this machine is looking a little bit different. So you have your own tool head system here. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we've got one right here. We have a magnetic cowl with four blower fans. We've got one for the heat break and a duct on the inside. It's a little okay. bit tricky. That saves a lot of volume. Oh, so we have four blowers for cooling. Oh, so this front guy here isn't for isn't for heat sink. That's the yeah, heat yeah. sink guy. Ah, so you get one extra fan for park cooling. Yeah. And some LEDs for good measure. More LEDs is always better. Absolutely. We're using a E3D PZ probe. Nice. To touch off. We have one custom machine plate to interface everything with. And we do have a filament cutter in here. Yeah, we have a low profile filament cutter. And then of course our board on the back. Excellent. Is that a custom board or using an off the shelf board? No, we're, this is a LDO Nighthawk. Okay. Right now we're using, we have Mellow on this machine, but we're trying to push over to USB. Okay. Yeah. Just for simplicity's sake versus yeah. CAN bus on a machine yeah. like this. Okay. Absolutely. So this is awesome. So this would be compatible obviously with box drill. You have a box drill up top here. Yep. Um, what size is this? 300, I would say, or 250, no 300. I think it's 250. It's 250? Okay, it's 250. So we have a 250 print volume here, but theoretically you could build it however big you want, kind of. The numbers are changed a little bit from the plate because the scraper bar takes up in the yeah. back, but uh, the numbers are on the website. And then I think Z is only 220. Okay, so yeah. because of the different mechanical setup, there is a little bit of differences in build volume, but it's yeah. all disclosed, obviously. Um, so this is really cool. And this is also a kinematic mount here for the tool head as well, right? Yep. So, so you can just heads. remove it with magnets, right? Yep, it just pulls straight off. So we got some four really strong magnets and some ball couplers there to show everything's aligned. And that is... This is easier to see. So we got three slotted. Looking at the and um, these are just acorn nuts, you know, cap nuts. Yep, that's very clever. Cool. So where would people be able to find more information about this system? Automatedlayers.com, but we're working with Quest 3D and we hope that they're on the shelf soon. Excellent. Thank you very much, Balin. Thank you. Cheers. Coverage for this year's Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest is sponsored by LDO Motors. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description.